Yeah, sure. Um, first, I want to uh, congratulate um, Arizona. They played amazing uh, that that first half. Um, it was um, it was incredibly difficult for us to get anything done. Um, and I thought the, the 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 intensity level that they played with and the uh, aggressiveness on the defensive end, um, you know, uh, we we just uh, didn't respond uh, as I had hoped we would. Um, you know, that's two games in a row now that you know we faced. You know that kind of that kind of pressure and. Um, uh, I think it took its toll, um, and all the credit goes to Arizona and uh, Ari McDonald. I said going into the game that I don't think we've we've had to play against a guard as as good as she is, and she proved it tonight. Um, she just dominated the entire game, start to finish. Um, they, they, you know, we we pride ourselves on being, you know, pretty good at certain things and. We had no answer for her. Thank you, Coach. Our first question will be from Matt Ward. Matt, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. A quick question about the um, the foul totals. 44 fouls in the game. It's uh, over 10 fouls per quarter. Just wondering specifically what what impact do you think that had on the pace on and just how the game was played um not not looking for anything specifically on calls but just in general how the game was called uh yeah i mean uh what are you going to do you know uh you you got to play you got to play the game the way the way that it's the way that it's called uh, and, and usually Usually, the team that's most aggressive, you know, ends up uh, benefiting from uh, the way the game is is called. And uh, I think Arizona put the officials in a situation where they had to decide uh, almost every possession: should I blow the whistle or not? Um, but yeah, there there were a lot, but uh, that that certainly, you know didn't impact winning and losing. It might have impacted what the game looked like and how it was played, but um, it didn't impact winning and losing at all. Next question is from Alexa. Alexa, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Hey, Gina, this is Alexa Filton from the Hartford Current. Um, when Kristen was just on here, she admitted that she thought the team thought it was going to be probably easier than it was. And I'm just curious if you saw that at all going into the game, if you think the team underestimated Arizona and if that kind of, once they came out so strong and you guys were rocked back on your heels, it couldn't overcome it. Uh, well, you never know what's in a player's mind, you know, or what's in a, a team's mind. You hope you do. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I've said all along this year to those that have followed us all year long, we have a very immature group, you know, and uh, uh, not just young. I mean, we have a young group, but very immature group. And when we're, you know, when we're high and when we're, you know, on top of the world, we think, you know, everything's great. And uh, uh, when when things don't go our way, there's a, there's a poutiness about us. There's a uh, feeling sorry for ourselves about us that, uh, you know, that you, you, you don't win championships when, when you're like that, unless you get lucky. Um, so, uh, if that is indeed what the mindset was, uh, because believe me, the scouting report on Arizona and the game plan on Arizona, uh, was way more thorough and way more involved than 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 the Baylor one was, to be honest with you. And we spend more time, we spend more time on the Arizona game than we did on the Baylor game. Uh, it seemed like. So, 
if that's the, if that's the case, then it's bad coaching by us, and it's a it's it's a sign of immaturity on our team. Um, and we need to grow up if we expect to be back here in the future. Next question is from Dom. Dom, please state your name and affiliation. Uh, yeah, Dom Amori from the Hartford Current. Gina, just kind of following up with that, uh, is this the kind of thing, and, and you've been, I know, through these things many times, is this the kind of thing it takes for a young team to, to grow up and then maybe launch it into the next season? Will, will this stay with, with the team through the season and maybe be the impetus for, for next year, especially what you have coming back? Yeah, I, I, I think so, uh, Dom. You know, uh, I've been down this road before, like you said. You know, uh, we've lost 10 games in the Final Four <laughs> over the years. Uh, and uh, each, each of them obviously were impactful in some, some way or another. Uh, but the ones that we have lost where uh, we just were not up for the moment. We weren't up to the moment because we, you know, for whatever reason, weren't mature enough, weren't experienced enough, didn't have enough, uh, you know, time together, you know, one year together, uh, whatever the case may be. And everybody told me, hey, listen, this year is just a setup. This is, a, you know, this is, this is the, you know, the building block for the next couple of years. But it's, it's, it's great to say that. Uh, not so great, you know, today when you're sitting here talking to you guys, you know, when you're this far away from playing in the championship game. So um, I do think that these games do tend to stay with you a little bit longer. Um, and uh, I would, I would, I would say that at least on my end, you know, I'm going to be coaching in the Final Four next year on April 2nd or whatever that date is. You know, what my team is going to look like, I, I don't know because we've got a whole bunch of new guys coming in and, you know, how that goes. But um, I, I believe that what we learned this year uh, through all the ups and downs is going to really benefit us for uh, for the next couple of years, for sure. I remember saying that in 2008, you know, we played and we lost to Stanford in the semifinal. It was Maya Moore's freshman year. And I said, uh, we'll be back. And uh, we went back and we were undefeated the next two seasons. So I don't know that that, I don't think that's gonna happen, but we'll be back here sooner rather than later. Next question is from Danny. Danny, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Coach Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. You've mentioned time and time again you have been to the Final Four uh, and you've been through situations like this. How much time do you normally take to yourself to get yourself prepared for the upcoming season, like you said, because you have a pretty young team and you have new, new people coming in. So how much time do you take to yourself before you get back into it? Well, this is an unusual year. When we get back, the kids are all leaving April 10th or they have to be off campus by the 10th or 11th. So they'll be gone April 11th to June 1st when they come for summer school. So you're not going to have any time to spend around them anyway. Um, so you're not going to be involved with any of the new players. You're not going to see them. You're not going to interact with them until June. Uh, and then June is kind of like mini camp. You know, like in football, you know, they have these mini camps. And in June, you'll start to maybe – put some pieces together and see what it might look like, what works, what doesn't work, who adapts to what. But uh, uh, this, th this coming, you know, June, July, August, uh, there'll be a lot of time spent on uh, evaluating this past season and all the great things that we did and preparing for next season and all the things that we have to do better. Um, that, that's kind of how it goes most years. This is an unusual year. Last year was an unusual year because we didn't get a chance to do anything all summer. So we're trying to get back to whatever normal is now. But um, 
Next year's team, if all stays the same, will have 10 freshmen and sophomores. I might not spend a lot of time thinking about that now that you mention it. Next question is from Douglas. Douglas, please unmute yourself and state your question. Hey, Gina, um, just kind of off that, if, if you could just discuss the freshmen and kind of how, how you think they grew this tournament. I know I say there's a lot of eyes on them and, um, you know, especially Paige and, and Aaliyah with the work that they got, you know, what, what they can take from this and just what you thought of their growth. Well, obviously without our freshmen, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here, right? So each and every game, each and every time that we were together, they – they learned a lot. They contributed a lot. Um, you know, you, you could see their inexperience show. I thought, uh, you know, uh, uh, this was not one of Aaliyah's better games, but she got better as the game went on. Um, you know, Nika hasn't played in a while. Um, and Paige is another example that um, – you know, you, you, you're, you're only as good as your teammates. It's bottom line. You know, you're only as good as the team around you. Um, you know, Ari McDonald was amazing tonight. But she got a lot of support from every kid on their team. Everybody on their team did their part. You know, made shots when they were open, made plays when they had to make. Um, you know, so as good as Paige was this year, and she carried our team, you know, through most of this season, uh, that's not how you win championships with with one player having to do everything, you know. Um, and she needs to get a lot better, you know. As good as you all think she is, and she's really good, um, you know. If we're going to be here the next couple of years with her at, at Connecticut, she needs to get a lot better. And I don't mean just on the court either. Next question is from Roger. Roger, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Roger Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American. Gino, for years you've said that this is, or that the Elite Eight game was the most difficult to play. Has this game become the most difficult because of the bigness of the moment and the need for mature players once you get there? Yeah. Uh, you know, people think that, uh, you know, you – you, you go to the Final Four and that somehow uh, the culture of your team, you know, because it says Connecticut on your jersey or because you're the coach that's been there 20 times, that that is what's going to get you over the hump. And that's not what it is. Every year that I've come here, that's not what it is. I, I'll bet you that, you know, if I were to count the 11 championships that we have, Two of them maybe came out of, you know, the the group as a who we are. The other the other nine come from because you have outstanding individuals who have amazing performances, kind of like Ari McDonald had tonight. You know, so when you get to this level, you need to have a couple mature players that are capable of doing that, because. The other team is really good, too. And they're going to take you out of a lot of things you want to do. And you're going to have to have players, you know, who are that good, who rise above it. Um, and that, you know, Arizona proved that tonight for sure. Next question is from Matt. Matt, please unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation. Matt Ward, did you have a question? I think that's yeah, Coach Matt Ward, uh, CBS huh? Sports. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just just really quickly, uh, just in terms of how I mean, since you you you've won obviously a number of times, you've been here a number of times. Just how difficult it is to get to the national, just to get to the national championship, let alone win it. I mean, you, I, Iowa was a very hyped game. You played a national championship level game against Baylor, and then again tonight against Arizona. So just. Just how difficult is it, and, and, and what exactly, um, 
you know, maybe tonight was, was, was missing a little bit for you guys. Yeah, you know, when we were making it look so easy, I try to tell people this is really hard and nobody believed me. <laughs> you know, so when you're winning all the time and you're, you're winning, you know, four years in a row and X number of years out of X number of years, you know, people start to believe that this is really easy. It's not. This is really, really difficult. If it wasn't difficult, more people would win that many times. This is very, very difficult. You know, uh, Arizona's in their first one this, next year. You know, if Stanford wins, you know, Sunday, it'll be their first title in 30 years. So th these are not easy. And they're not getting any easier. As you saw, you know, as you mentioned, with the games you have to play to get there, not easy at all. Uh, and what, you know, we've talked about, you know, what was missing tonight. Um, their, their defense took us out of our offense. And we were in a scramble mode a lot offensively, and uh, we got it back, I think, and then we just missed shots that you got to make at this level at this point in time. You know, you got to make those shots. You know, you got to make those free throws. You got to make those layups that you get. You got to make those open, you know, threes that you get because they're not easy to come by. So um, I, I think the... The growth, I think, of, uh, of, of our team uh, is going to be in, the, in those areas. You've you got to be able to play, you know, a bunch of high-level games in a row, boom, 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 in order to win the whole thing. And you got to get a little bit of luck. I mean, look at that first game tonight. It could have gone either way, right? A bounce of the ball here, a bounce on the rim either way. You know, you... you <laughs> You need to be really good and you need to get a little bit of luck.